Welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Newsbaum. Our very special guest and friend of ATP, Claire Lopez, is back with us. You know that Claire is an international security expert, had a very long and distinguished career with the United States government, including the CIA, and is now known as somebody you should listen to and follow her writings. And later in the show, we'll get how you can get in touch with Claire from Claire. Welcome back. Thank you, Barry. Always happy to be with you. Let's talk about China. Um, China in the past has been an enormous trading partner. Uh, for those of us that shop Amazon, uh, probably three quarters of the products come directly from China, maybe indirectly, but they're Chinese made goods. So they're an enormous trading partner. And yet, recently, they sure don't look like a friend of the United States. Let's start with a 50,000 foot view, Claire. China. Friend or foe? Foe. Um, you know, the other thing that's available at Amazon.com, uh, not that I'm uh, plugging them exactly here, but in uh, these, uh, this period of, uh, you know, staying at home over these last several months, I have uh, bought and read a number of books about China. I had not been a China expert before. Um, but I'll, I'll mention one in particular that really got my attention because it gets to your question, Barry. Um, and the book is called The 100 Year Marathon. It's written by Michael Pillsbury. It's a few years old, but absolutely invaluable for somebody just learning about these subjects. Um, Michael Pillsbury has a long and a very distinguished career as a fluent Mandarin speaker and China expert in a number of US administrations and also now think tanks. He is at the Hudson uh, Institute right now. Um, and he originally, going back all the way to President Richard Nixon and uh, Henry Kissinger and the opening to China, he was a staunch supporter, as were so many of our senior national security leadership, staunch supporter of opening up to China in the hope and, and the belief, really, the confidence, that by drawing China into the, the world system of trade and commerce and uh, international diplomacy, that that interaction, uh, that opening, um, would moderate the communist um, regime in Beijing. And it was firmly believed that would happen, including by Michael, who discusses in this book, The 100 Year Marathon, how for such a long time, really decades, he continued to believe that and work towards achieving it, including um, the, the, uh, the bringing of China into the World Trade Organization, which was a huge commercial uh, and financial benefit for that regime. But then Michael Pillsbury writes, he began to see things differently. And he realizes now and, and takes responsibility, really, for his earlier positions, but has completely done a 180 degree uh, pivot from those, those earlier uh, positions and policies that he recommended to understanding, as do a number of other authors I've just recently read, Gordon Chang, for example, uh, Bill Gertz, um, retired General uh, Robert Spaulding, uh, just finished the book by, um, uh, Newt Gingrich, uh, Trump versus China, um, the very excellent um, expert on China, Stephen Mosher, read all of these books. But like them, now Michael Pillsbury writes um, that it was never going to happen, that this deeply Marxist, Leninist, communist regime in Beijing that came to power, remember, in the 40s, uh, with Mao Zedong at the barrel of a gun, that it was ever going to change uh, in, in a way that would make it um, more like a liberal Western style democracy. Just not going to happen. Well, let, let's, so, jump in, let's jump into present time. Yeah. Um, you've got, as, as, as Trump always says, you know, this Chinese virus. And it's not the first time. Um, we've had a number of them. There's the Hong Kong flu, the bird flu, uh, H1N1. Um, 
and now you've got COVID-19, all of these have a connection to China in some fashion. Is there a connection here? Are they exporting disease? Oh, absolutely. Um, I don't mean to say that every one of those earlier uh, viruses, and by the way, they do all, as well as SARS, uh, Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome, and MERS, Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, belong, as the common flu as well, belong uh, to a family of viruses called the coronaviruses, plural. So they have that in common, but I'm, I don't mean to say that every one of those uh, was deliberately um, spread out from China, but I will say this, uh, that we know China has a, an extensive offensive biological warfare program. Uh, we know about the one declared BSL-4, Biosafety Level 4 uh, Laboratory, uh, the Wuhan Institute of Virology. But in addition to that, China has an, a sprawling network of dozens of other labs and facilities that are part of its biological warfare program, most of them under PLA, uh, People's Liberation Army, or Ministry of Defense control. So is this part of what people are now saying the last, I'd say the last year, year and a half, which has become uh, a, a brand new narrative, which is China is attempting to export their perceived uh, extensively superior form of government around the world. Do you think they're trying to export the Chinese version of government to the United States? And if so- No, not, not exactly. Um, I would put it this way instead. Um, again, I'm relying on these wonderful books I've read uh, recently and Michael Pillsbury comes back to mind. Um, uh, the 100 year marathon refers to the 100 year period between Mao Zedong's victory in 1949 and 2049, in which period of time uh, this Chinese Communist Party intends fully to uh, become the hegemon or ba, as they would call it in Mandarin, of the entire world. Now, that doesn't mean that they intend to export the Maoist communist. Marxist form of government, but rather that historically speaking, as I've, I've come to, to learn and study, the Chinese think of themselves as the, singular, the uh, empire under heaven. And they think that their position ought to be uh, the hegemon, the most powerful uh, nation uh, in the world. But the, the model for that goes back many thousands of years, and the model is that of an emperor vis-a-vis -vis, uh, vassals, uh, uh, tribute, tribute payers. And so we see China establishing its Belt and Road Initiative, uh, what they call the String of Pearls. These are the various port facilities it's building around the world in key places. Um, and these are ways of tying far-flung um, countries and peoples to Beijing well, stay on economically that and other ways. Tell people how they can find you. Well, I am at Claire M. Lopez on social media, uh, Facebook, Parlay, and Twitter. Um, you may find uh, videos and uh, pieces I write at various places, certainly videos here at American Truth Project, but also at Sharia Crime Stoppers, the United West, uh, Citizens Commission on Benghazi, and Brandon House's World View Weekend. Oh, all those people, I like them. <laughs> Me too. They're good people. And for those of you that haven't subscribed to our text message alert system, please take out your cell phone, just in the United States, and text the word truth and send it to 8. 8202 push send you'll be automatically signed up you'll get all of our shows on your cell phone for free for atp report i'm barry newspot